Madam Speaker and members of Congress, pursuant to the Constitution and the laws of the United States. Objections by congressional Republicans to the constitutionally required ceremony of counting the electoral votes certifying that Democrat Joe Biden won the 2020 presidential election were expected. But a riot by supporters of President Donald Trump and his unfounded claims that the election was fraudulent broke open the growing cracks in Trump's Republican wall of support. The Republican Party, unfortunately, has become really a cult of personality. And as I said, to be a Republican means to support President Trump no matter what. But tireless loyalty from Vice President Mike Pence ended Wednesday, telling supporters what he told Trump the day before. He has no power to subvert the election results. Trump kept up the pressure on Pence during a rally near the White House hours before the count began. All Vice President Pence has to do is send it back to the states to recertify and we become president and you are the happiest people. Before the mob breached the Capitol, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell warned his colleagues of the political peril they faced by objecting. The Constitution gives us here in Congress a limited role. The voters, the courts, and the states have all spoken. They've all spoken. If we overrule them, it would damage our republic forever. Senator Josh Hawley of Missouri was the first to sponsor an objection to the electoral vote count. After the rioters were dispersed and order restored in the Senate, Hawley remained undeterred even as the rioting had tightened the resolve of Democrats and some Republicans to approve Biden's win. To those who say that this is just a formality today, an antique ceremony that we've engaged in for a couple of hundred years, I can't say that I agree. The opportunity to be heard, to register objections is very vital because this is the place where those objections are to be heard and dealt with, debated and finally resolved. Senator Mitt Romney, the Republican nominee for president in 2012, took the young senator and others to task for supporting Trump's unfounded claims of election fraud. No congressional audit is ever going to convince these voters, particularly when the president will continue to say that the election was stolen. The best way we can show respect for the voters who were upset is by telling them the truth. That's the burden. That's the duty of leadership. The truth is that President-elect Biden won the election. President Trump lost. I've had that experience myself. It's no fun. And in the waning days of his single term, Trump faces the possibility of a second impeachment vote, which may force members of his own party to make a stand one way or another. Steve Reddish, VOA News, Washington.